you're the technical person here. You're the expert. Well, how can can you just sort of like give us some understanding of what is meant by things like the official unemployment rate? Like how 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 do they determine it? What does it mean? Why does it sometimes feel a bit off? You know, do you know you know what I mean? Because I mean, you speak to people and they have one story, and then you look at what's coming out in the newspapers, and it's a very nice small number. You know, like three point four percent, three point five percent. Does it offer a complete picture of our of the state of our workforce? So the employment rate in general, what it says, is really it's just a, a portion of people who are unemployed and looking for jobs over the workforce, which is the workforce is basically a uh, sum of uh, people who have jobs and people who are looking for jobs but don't have jobs. This is, a, this is a very important distinction to have. When they think about unemployment, they, they talk about people that don't have jobs but are looking for jobs, not just people that don't have jobs. Because this goes back to the idea of a workforce. A workforce of people, people are people that uh, the population that is available to do work. Because in a population, there are people that exist but don't work and they, they don't need to work. Just for instance, uh, students, uh, the reti some retirees, as well as a bunch of people that are in school. So if you think about the labor force, uh, officially it counts people that age be from 15 to 64 in Malaysia. And that's not the full story. They also discount people that in university who are not working because they are full-time student. They, even the armed forces are not included in the uh, labor force in the employment calculation. How unemployment rate is, is, is determined is that it's essentially a survey, a survey conducted by the Department of Statistics. So the survey is, is generally representative. Uh, you are un, we just cannot, don't have the resources, don't have the resource at the moment to proper census every month, right? So they do the survey. So they are pretty, uh, pretty, I think it's pretty reliable. And, and the thing is, sometimes you look at the result, it's 3.3%, 3.2%. So in April, it was 3.9%, which is the highest in the longest time. This might sound like a small number, but it's actually quite, quite big. Uh, if you think about it, uh, if you're not mistaken, 3.3%, that's about 200,000 pe 200, people, not, not uh, 200,000 or 300,000, I can't remember the exact number, not having work, but looking for jobs, right? Because if you drill down on this on these figures, there's it, also a lot of caveats. For instance, to be, a, to be considered as fully employed, you need to be working for at least an hour in a week. So if you work just an hour in a week, you're considered employed. So there's a, there's a philosophical debate about it. Essentially, the reason they did, they did that is not so much they think people are full-time. It's not the fact that they think, the statistician think that if you work just an hour, uh, you're considered working full-time. No, what, what they're trying to measure is really people that have total lack like, of work. This does, does not mean that uh, the statistician uh, do not recognize that there is a thing as underemployment, there is an underemployment, they, they do recognize it. But the thing is in Malaysia, they don't really report that uh, quite well. Is there a generally, um, you know, like an international standards of sorts when we talk about underemployment? Is there like a benchmark? There is, but it's a bit complicated. I mean, there, there are three versions I'm mistaken, but the, I think the most popular one is really, because in the survey, you, you could be asked, uh, how how many hours do you work in a week? And then they also ask how many hours in a week that you want to work more, right? So if they say that you, you, if, you're, if, you, if the number of hours they want to work more is more than the num actual number of, work of hours, that means they are willing to work more, that means they are underemployed. That's one way of defining it. It's a mix of both what you can feasibly collect and uh, collate rather and also just sort of like how one would define uh, statistics. Um, but then, I mean, uh, I believe there's a forecast that, you know, our rate of unemployment is going to grow quite substantially uh, by, by the end of the year. Um, I'm, 
I have a number in my head, but I'm not 100% sure whether that's the right number. So, like, um, is how, how, how is the government dealing with this issue right now? So, I think the government is following a pretty, a pretty what well, seems to be attempted right now, which we've seen everywhere else. Um, is exactly the right step in general in terms of just the direction. Um, so there are essentially two major policies when it comes to addressing rising unemployment in this particular moment of time. One is wage subsidies, which is essentially a, what you call a job retention program. Uh, what it means is that in time of crisis, companies suddenly don't have the cash to keep employing people. So that did not let these companies uh, fire their workforce, their labor, uh, their workers. Uh, instead of that, then the government comes in and subsidizes some portion or, or a large portion of those uh, wages. So in, so in the sense that the company don't have to fire the job, fire, fire the workers. So this, um, this assumes that in the, in the future, somehow in the future, the companies would need those uh, workers again. But that, that, that's actually one step, one, one measure, uh, job subsidies. The other one is really to partially subsidize workers that have been laid off, not temporarily laid off, I mean, put on uh, unpaid leave. So right. the government don't, don't pay these people, but the government pays them instead. So those are essentially two steps. It might be others, but these two, two measures seem to be the most popular uh, in the past couple of months. Um, but the problem is, it's not the, just the direction that you need to think about. It's also the magnitude of those, uh, the magnitude of those measures. And for Malaysia, it seems that the size of wage subsidy, especially, uh, should I mean it, it could be much higher. Yeah, of course they are considered like common finance or whatever, but given time of crisis, it, it, does, it does seem that uh, we need more in terms of which subsidies, especially at the beginning.